<clears throat> this episode of Sexplanations is sponsored by AdamandEve.com. I'm so glad that they have advanced sex toys just like people in my field have advanced sex education literature. Let's review, shall we? Starting with the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Sex, copyrighted in 1950. A volume of similar theme first appeared some years ago. It represented a summary of sexual knowledge as it stood then. However, during the intervening period, after years of inertia following upon a war and preceding another, the science of sexology has made such a rapid and brilliant progress that we need to consider it opportune to place before the public this volume in order to make the results of newer scientific research available to the general reader in popular form. I've read through some of these and a lot of them say similar sentiments about how books prior to this were crap and weren't written by people who <laughs> practice good science. So I'm writing a better book and it's beautiful. Oh, these illustrations, even though they might not be as accurate as what we have now, they're still stunning. I love seeing how people used to be curious about our bodies and where information came from. Oh, if I didn't love this book in its intact form, it would be so much fun to cut apart and turn these illustrations into cards to send to people. They're so pretty. Chapter nine, activities of the human hormone laboratory, the thyroid and suprarenal glands. Where are you in illustration of? You're a big one, you're two pages. Ooh, ah. Peaceful fetus. Look at that. Look at that art that would make such a beautiful grading card. Oh, the brain's relationship to the testicles. Whoa. Cross-sectional picture shows ovum on its way to uterus. Male sperm attacking female ovum. We don't get illustrations like this anymore. Look at all these pretties. Ah, oh, so beautiful. I really like what's going on here. I don't fully understand it. I mean, why it's so shaded. How you would see the pelvic organs of a woman's body were transparent. I'm totally gonna make these into greeting cards. That's what photocopiers are for. Next book. You, friend. How to Attain and Practice the Ideal Sex Life. It was first published in 1940, and it says, this is the result of 45 years of actual practice by Dr. J. Rutgers. And it says, originally $6, now $2.98. What are you now? Ooh, now it's worth $35. Okay, I remember when I was teaching human sexuality, I would share with people just the table of contents of this very book because, I'll just read some of them to you. Two main sources of our sex life. Sex glands of man and woman. Sex experiments of nature. New sex experiments and discoveries for improving sexual life. And then under it, it says rejuvenation treatments for increasing sex potency of man and woman. Sex changes in mature male and female. Unique journey of sperm cells. Nuptial flight of new sperm cells. How sexual pleasure vitalizes our life energy. Oh, I like this line. What did you just say here? The dangerous age in man and woman, an ideal sexual life for maximum health. From group relations to private affairs. Increasing our sexual powers of resistance. Oh boy. Although sexual abstinence in the child seems angelically pure and in the young man so honorable, we are much to be pitied if we have reached the summit of our lives without having found what we sought, or if we have found it and lost it again, or if for any other reason the greatest happiness of life is withheld from us. What is the greatest happiness of life? Are you saying it's sex? Oh, book. I mean, so informative. I'm really glad all of this existed because it gave a foundation for everything that we've built upon. But I also know that people who were raised on this literature are sometimes stuck to these ideas and it's hard to help them adjust and evolve. This is fascinating to me. So these are other scientific publications that were coming out at the same time. Uh, like Magnus Hirschfeld was one of the founders of sexology. Eugenics and sex harmony. We have that one. Mm. Banish Fear and Sex Ignorance Forever by a Medical Doctor, author of Your Mysterious Glands. Here at last is this book you have been waiting for. Yes. Who was waiting for this book? I want to know these people. Whoa. First printing, June 1933. Lots of printings of this book, which could indicate a bunch. But for me, it says that one printing was not enough. More people wanted to know about sexuality. They were curious. Oh, more beautiful illustrations. Oh, I saw something from Kellogg. 
Uh oh. Frequent cause of constipation, maternity, alcoholism, children's diseases, bringing up a child, growing a child, mental disorder, sleepwalking, cats and dogs, cats and dogs spread disease, the enema habit, headaches, common cold, physical examination. How long will you live? Birth control. Where's the sex? It seems almost inconceivable that in this enlightened age, there should exist men so bigoted, so grossly ignorant, and so lacking in all the fine qualities of decency and justice that they would force maternity upon unwilling women. Whoa! It is difficult for an intelligent man or woman patiently to tolerate the medieval point of view of legislative body. Remember, it is the men who make the laws that would punish with imprisonment, disgrace, loss of citizenship, or heavy fines, a nurse or a doctor who would give a woman specific advice, enabling her to prevent conception. Yet the day will come when every man possessed of a single iota of decency will blush with shame when he reads of the cruelties, the persecutions, the horrible degradations forced upon such fine upstanding women as Margaret Sanger, Dr. Marie Stopes, Mary Heaton Voice, Mrs. Mary Ware Bennett and scores of others who suffered at the hands of female inquisitors merely for trying to bring to the women of the world a knowledge that should be as free to them as the air they breathe or the water they drink. Ooh, prostitution. Prostitution is proverbially women's oldest profession. Nevertheless, to define the word satisfactorily from a scientific and moral standpoint would be exceedingly difficult. If we assume that prostitution means having sexual relations for material gain, then young women who marries a rich old man on account of his money might justifiably be classed as a prostitute. Ugh. I mean, here's the problem with books like this. In this era, and among um, a fair number of historical figures in sexology, talks about eugenics, which is a type of breeding system where you try and like purify the population and it is not fondly thought of in present times. So take what you like and leave the rest, but there's still a lot of powerful statements in here and a foundation for thinking about sexuality, maybe not eugenics or genetics in general, that can be really helpful. Okay, cool. Next book, here we go. Hygiene of Marriage. I think flipping through you the other day, I was curious. <laughs> Copyright 1932. No portion of this book may be reprinted without the written permission of the publishers. Okay, got it, noted. This is like typewriter, amazing. If I was more of a reader, I would want to read every single word in this book. You can actually see the impressions of a machine or a person, something that imprinted these. <sighs> So amazing. Oh, there's a clitoris. It's tiny. Yeah. More than a little nub. That's a big deal. Good job, person. And a penis diagram with the foreskin. What happened to those? How could you have it right and then mess it up? I don't understand. In temperate climates, puberty occurs in boys around the age of 14. At this time, the secondary sexual characteristics begin to appear and the organs of reproduction exhibit a marked growth. The seminal secretions are found to contain ripe spermatozoa for the first time. The quantity of these secretions increases until it reaches its maximum at full maturity. I love this. I love this. This. The various ways in which one might make a sexual adjustment to life may be graded in descending order of value as follows. One, very happy marriage. Two, moderately happy marriage. Three, sexual abstinence. Four, temporary mutual sex attachments. Five, autoeroticism. Six, unhappy marriage. Seven, prostitution. I'm gonna stamp that with a disagree. Birth control laws, the legality of birth control in the 19th century. The requirements of a good contraceptive. While it has been said we cannot go into a detailed description of contraceptives, it will be permissible to state the general requirements of a good contraceptive. A good contraceptive should be one, reliable, two, harmless, three, simple, four, cheap, five, aesthetic, and six, controlled by the woman. I have so many thoughts and feelings, I just wanna know so much. Get yourself these books. Learn from your past. Next book, The Sexual Life. What do you want to teach me book from the 1907? This one is from 1923, but first copyright, 1907. Oh boy. The copulative function. Smells musty. Nervous women. Copulation and propagation. Sexual inequality. Hygienic sexual relations. Sexual habits and the married. Act of copulation. Male sexual sense. Female sexual sense. Sexual passion and sexual sense. Man is naturally a social being and the sum total of all that goes to make life worth living may be expressed in the word contentment. The pursuit of happiness is the aim of all human endeavor and there is nothing that contributes so largely to the happiness of adult human life when actual necessities are available or causes the person more secret concern and anxiety than his or her individual sexual relations. Oh, 
I put a note card in this one. This is sex and marriage. Okay, tell me about you. Dr. Lambert, member of all these societies, formerly professor of medicine, co-author, talks with men concerning themselves, director of Orchard Hill Camp for Children. Interesting. You published this in 1932, and then reprinted it four other times. Good on you. Okay, this one also has amazing illustrations. Let's go to the page I've marked. It's under a chapter called self-abuse. The simple act of masturbation or self-abuse is not harmful and then italicized if it is not not continued. The harm is very largely that it detracts from the energy from progressive and helpful pursuits. The harm produced by the candy eating habit of children is no condemnation of candy. The harm results from the fact that the child with the candy habit hogs his system and destroys his appetite for wholesome bodybuilding foods. I'm reading this to you. That doesn't mean that I believe it. I'm very pro masturbation and moderation. Oh, here's another. This is an illustration showing circumcision of the hood above the clitoris. Do, do, do. Under the disease and generative organs section. Abortions and miscarriages. To the general public, the terms abortion and miscarriage might be changed to criminal destruction of life and accidental loss of the undeveloped babe. But in medical terms, abortion is considered the loss of the fetus from any cause before the end of the third month of pregnancy, while miscarriage is the loss anytime after the third month and before the end of the seventh month. The loss after the end of the seventh month is termed premature labor. That's helpful to know. Thank you, book. Okay, frigidity in women. There are two of these. Yes, there are. Volumes one and two. And this fancy one has a little note in the front that is adhesed here. It says, notice the sale of this book is strictly limited to members of the medical profession, psychoanalysts, scholars, and to such adults who have a definite position in the field of psychological or social research. Like you couldn't access it unless you were a professional. Education doesn't belong to everyone. Uh, I don't know. Copyright 1926. This is volume one. General considerations, love at first sight, individual love requisite, the sexual trauma of adults, the psychology of the frigid woman, which goes on and on. Maybe this is why not everyone is allowed to read it. Infantile fixations, the will to unpleasure, imaginary love, and then notes. Okay, I, I wanna know about the will to unpleasure. Every human being stands from the moment of his birth under the dominion of an instinctive drive, which may be called the pleasure will. We must distinguish in an active and a passive type of character, the two differing in the manner by, no, this is, no, you are not. Yep, you're not user friendly if for somebody who's not actually reading it. Oh. She was a happy, healthy child exhibit. No, I just, I don't even wanna give you attention, book. Frigid woman. Psh. All right, you stay there and your other volume stays here. On the frigidity of women, you don't need to read, read these books. Not just to like watch explanations. Frigidity is not the language to use. There's a lot more going on. Preferences, sexual orientation, whether or not the sex is good, honesty, trust, so, yeah, nah. sex and the love life by William J. Fielding. This one has a ribbon that came with it. Somebody sent these to me. Isn't that awesome? So I can share them with you. This was copyright 1927. And the inscription is to Havelock Ellis, one of my favorite sexologists, also controversial. Yes, because they're very thankful that Havelock has made this huge contribution to sexology and they have then written this book. Sex and the Hygiene of Marriage, it's in here. Man's sexual nature, sexual disorders in women, venereal diseases. This is before HIV. The drinking of plenty of water, as already recommended, will help to keep them flushed and facilitate their activity. Keep what flushed? Oh, the kidneys. Good job. Probably the only real drawback to early period is the comparative lack of mental maturity that might militate against the permanency of the affections in the face of radically changing ideas or evolving electrical potentialities that may finally throw the parties to the merit into different and uncongenial spheres. <laughs> What? Stay there. Next, The Folklore of Sex by Albert Ellis. He is one of the early sexologists out there. If I had a child, Ellis would be one of the names. All right, contents, fornication, adultery, sexual promiscuity, prostitution, venereal disease. And that's all under part one, extramarital relations, sex relations, non-coital sex relations, kissing, petting, masturbation, sex relations involving pregnancy, illegitimacy, birth control, abortion, pregnancy. Then sex organs, desires and expressions, nudity, sex organs, scatology, Oh my gosh, this is so great. Introduction, the story of a study. I just want to read it. Sexual intercourse, chapter 18. This shall be a relatively lighthearted chapter for the question it is concerned with is what do the American people think of sexual intercourse when it occurs in legal marriage? I want to know what just sex in general, please. And the majority answer seems to be they like it. Sexual copulation in, of, by, and for itself is not, as we have seen in several of our previous chapters, very enthusiastically accepted in modern America. Even 
even though the majority of people like it. Mm. Okay. I mean, I'm sure there is so much in here that I could just go and go and go. All right, I'm done with you. Two more. Human sexual behavior, the range and diversity of human sexual experience throughout the world is seen in six representative cultures. Story time, purple gilded edges. Oh, whoa, what did I just see? Self-masturbation. Denotes self-stimulation aimed at affecting orgasm. The term generally indicates solitary activity as opposed to social sexual behavior. Ooh, orgasm and sleep. Yes, talk about all the things. Paraphilias. Published in New York and London. Sponsored by the Institute of Sex Research in Bloomington, Indiana. And published in 1971. So old but not super old. Widows and widowers, courtship and marriage. Is this how people do book reviews? I don't know. This is how I'm doing the book review. Okay, so on Sexplanations, I talked about a culture that is part of the Cook Islands called Mangaya. And I talked about how they're considered one of the most sexually liberated or expressive cultures in the world. And people from that island wrote to me in the comments and they said, this is not true. Everything that you have said or you've read published is not true. And that's fascinating to me. I really wanna go there and talk with them directly but I just saw Mangaya written about in this book and it says sexual jealousy in marriage is still a potent factor in marital discord even or perhaps particularly in permissive societies like Mangaya. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this jealousy assured is not eliminated by the great amount of premarital freedom permitted in Mangaya and elsewhere in Polynesia. Doubtless the extensive premarital experimentation does aid in the formation of stable families in Mangaya. We don't know if it's true. Oh and then it goes into Innis Bay which is the other culture that I talked about in a video where they're considered the most sexually repressed. And I tried to go and visit them when I was in Ireland, but it turns out they don't exist anymore. The outstanding example of marital stability in this book is the island of Inish Bay, but the dreary price of this kind of stability seems much too high for most cultures to pay. That's where they have sex maybe once or twice in a lifetime, only for the purpose of procreation. Whoa, okay. Fascinating. Last book. What are you? How to attain and practice the egg. Oh, we've already done this one. I have two copies. I'm going to get it away. Thank you for watching this episode of Sexplanations. I hope you stay curious and don't just take the sexual literature teachings of this channel to be the end all be all because things will continue to evolve and there will be future versions of like Sexplanations interactions, Sexplanations review where people say, oh, all those things that Dr. Doe said aren't necessarily true now. So stay fresh. Also, I have this toy from adamandeve.com. One of my first experiences with a vibrator was something just like this magic wand. It had to be plugged into a wall. Very old, like the time at which people would call them back massagers rather than magic wands or masturbators. I got electrocuted. So I'm so grateful that technology has improved and there are these sleek, easy to clean, very user-friendly, non-electrocuting vibrators and other sex toys that are out there. You know, I'm glad that we have the foundation of sexology in all forms, in the research, the literature, the design. Industry, you have done well and I am glad that that it's continuing to improve. Yes, this is great. You have the charger here, power increase. Use it as a back massager if you want. Let's get you going. You don't want to electrocute me, do you? Virginity of women. Diggle, diggle. It's called the Mighty Metallic Wand. You can get it at adamandeve.com. When you put in the promo code DOE, D-O-E, which is my last name, you can get 50% off of this or an eligible item in your shopping cart, plus free shipping on any orders to the US and or Canada. Whoa. You know what to do.